is a very big problem on Canadian roads. It's our drivers. Slippery roads and giant snow drifts and whiteout conditions do not cause accidents. Bad drivers cause accidents. We're pathetic. We don't put on snow tires until after we need them. We make sudden and erratic lane changes. And when situations start getting out of control, we panic and do exactly the wrong thing. And it's not just the bad drivers who pay the price, it's pretty much anyone who happens to get in their way. As frightening as it is to think that all those bad drivers are out there sharing our highways with us, they are not nearly as terrifying as the eight people you're about to meet. These motorists somehow got their license, but then lost their way. Introducing Canada's worst drivers. From hundreds of nominations from across the country, we selected the bottom eight, the absolute worst of the worst. We've got Chris, who was nominated by his wife, Michelle. David was nominated by his buddy, George. Madalena got singled out by her best friend, Jennifer. And Manuel's nominator was his work colleague, Alex. Heather's next. Her husband, Ernie, put her name forward. Faith Ann was nominated by four people. Her co-worker Joanne represents them all. Which brings us to Bob, who's been branded a bad driver by his friend, Rob. And finally, we have Tatiana, nominated by mother-in-law, Beth. Every show, the drivers will attempt to complete several different challenges designed to test and improve their driving skills. The challenges will refine and reform those skills. This way? To prove they can be done, I'll be doing every challenge first. Now, I'm nothing special behind the wheel. I'm just an average driver. Sure. But next to Canada's worst, I'm absolutely outstanding. At the end of every episode, starting next week, the most improved driver will be released back into the wild. When the eight weeks are up, only one person will remain. And that person will be branded with the dubious title of Canada's worst driver. The first challenge for our eight nominees is simply to make it to our driver rehabilitation center. Oh, I couldn't move the gears. You couldn't get out of the car. Okay, we'll made it. You just leave it in drive, you never have to touch it again. Okay. okay? I'll just jump straight into the lake. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> jump straight in. Once they get going, our awful eight must find this ferry and use it to get to a remote island in Lake Ontario. From there, it's a straightforward drive along Highway 7. If they don't get lost, they'll run into this midway checkpoint where they must identify the livestock. Uh. Alpacas. After that, it's on to Highway 8, which will take our candidates to a decommissioned military base near the town of Picton. This base will be their new home, the Driver Rehabilitation Center, a boot camp for bad drivers. It's not meant to be fun, and no one will get to go home until we say so. We've given Canada's worst drivers local maps and detailed instructions. All told, the trip should take an hour and a half, but with this crowd, it could easily take all day. Have you ever been on a ferry? No. Nope. Already, unbelievable driving decisions are being made everywhere. Bob, for example, hasn't even left yet. Remember, I'm on this damn show because I drive too fast and I'm a psycho. You think 10 minutes is going to matter? He's giving everyone a head start. Chill out, Bob. What's with the backwards thing, man? Bob wants to show off by speeding past every other driver along the way. Getting off the ferry, Canada's worst drivers start looking for Highway 7. Let me read. Highway 7, we gotta go left. Yeah, very good. Was that Highway 7 left? Go left to 7. Is this the highway way? Highway 7. The idea that I'm go I might be driving with... Uh, Canada's worst driver. It's a little on the scary side. <laughs> we better pray for this one. I agree with you. Watch wow. over us and keep us safe today and and everybody else around. I got once a speeding ticket, which is totally unusual, <laughs> considering how I drive. Tatiana is so terrified of traffic, she creates traffic. 
Unfortunately, she doesn't see the irony or the cars that line up behind her. You know, some of the things that annoy me with drivers, people who, uh, who drive a little too slow. Tatiana's lack of speed is bad, but her fear of turning left is so overwhelming, it can cause total havoc even when no one else is on the road. Why did you make me come here? I'm not gonna make this corner. I'm telling you, this is, why did you make me come here? Baby, why did you make me come here? Faith Ann is at the opposite end of the bad driving spectrum. She's a fearless speed demon who's had 37 reported accidents. Her excuse is that bad driving runs in the family. Grandfather was pretty bad, and then he taught my dad, who's really bad, and then he taught my brother, who's very bad, and then they taught me. And of course, I'm really bad too. You heard right, 37 accidents. She even managed to hit one woman she doesn't know on two separate occasions. Four or five totals. And my last one was my biggest one, and I T-boned another car. Now I have a metal plate holding my calf to my kneecap, and I have a new car. If Faith Ann had a metal plate in her head, it wouldn't change her attitude. She sails through this stop sign without a care in the world. Oh, my God. Holy woman. Impatient. OK, that's just not necessary. Can you please slow down? She gets a little out of control. Oh, oh. Three times, you almost killed us. If you're ever in a hurry, I'm your girl if you're not afraid. I think those are good things. Meanwhile, most of our drivers are trying to navigate their way around the island. It's not pretty. We're on, uh, on Highway 8 I trust right you. now. I trust you. Good. <laughs> I love being trusted. You'll end up in the lake if you overshoot it, so you'll be okay. Great. You know, I'm trying to concentrate on what my foot's doing, what my hands are doing. Then all of a sudden, I'm not looking at the road. Heather, whose observational skills are a little lacking, has now ground to a halt and appears to be frozen with her finger stuck to the map. I don't know. We didn't mi miss any turns or anything there. I don't know. I didn't see anything. I grew up with it. <laughs> Madalena is a very social person. For her, being lost is a great opportunity to meet people. So where are you going? Are you guys going to get lost and stuff? Check this place yeah. already. Go all the way up here up to Highway 49 and go left. That's Can 49. you not? No. Please, honestly. Give it to me. I'll do it. <laughs> okay. You see this guy like this? You just do it because she gets you this lost. You with a pencil. I don't get this lost. Where's 49? Let's find 49. Right? Heather's husband, Ernie, used to be a truck driver, so he gets their directions. So I go back the way I came, that way. I guess they don't know signage, you know, Ontario like they do in Alberta. I told all the drivers explicitly that this is not a race. It's not a race, but the last one there is a loser. I sense some anger in Bob's voice, which is scary because he can get aggressive. Bob! Bob, okay, I don't want to do this today. He swerves. We're having fun now. He speeds. And like a teenager, he thinks it's all really cool. I describe my driving style as good. Fast, get you there quick. When people are in a car with me, they feel uh, terrorized, worried, scared. Oh, Stop. Like getting out. <laughs> I get worried. I'm still worried. I'm about 150, man. That's not even fast, man. I nominated Bob as Canada's worst driver just because he's totally crazy. He, uh, he does stuff that people would think is totally insane that normal people would never, ever do. Uh, he, he endangers himself, people that are in the car, and I think he endangers everybody on the road. Bob is a 12-car pileup waiting to happen. Have you ever heard of bumper tag? Wanna play bumper tag? Catch this. <laughs> bumper tag's when, uh, I don't know, someone does something stupid in front of me. Oh, look at this, Rob, you got a truck pulling in front of me. I'll wait till I got a clear spot and go around him. I owe this guy a lock up right here. No, Bob. Get in front of him, lock it up. It's hard to believe, but Bob locks up just meters ahead of this transport truck, forcing its driver to slam on his brakes. 
I'm not Canada's worst driver. I'm Canada's best driver. Delusion is common amongst our students. They're going to take a lot of work. They really are Canada's worst drivers. Here in Prince Edward County, Ontario, Canada's worst drivers are on a mission. Once they find this alpaca farm, they must head here to our Driver Rehabilitation Center. After giving everyone else a head start, Bob's now on the island too. Rob, man, the map tells us where the hell we are. That was like... I told Bob repeatedly that this is not a race. Man, I'm trying to race and do all at once, guy. Bob just, I think, He's wants to be the worst. <laughs> Um, I don't know what the old lady's problems are. Unless we want to come back, go back to where we came from. The lady in question is Heather. Heather only ever drives in her hometown of Medicine Hat, Alberta. So these rural roads are confusing her. I think I'm one of Canada's worst drivers because um, I've had a lot of accidents over the last 20 years. In two decades, she's written off 10 cars. No wonder she's nervous. I really don't know what makes me nervous about driving. I'm just maybe a very tense person. I need to learn to relax. I try not to say anything because I know it makes it worse. Up until this year, I really wouldn't ride with her. I think you missed that stop sign. Uh-oh. A cruise around their hometown brings back a flood of memories for Ernie, most of them involving Heather driving into things. Isn't this the hill where you were going too fast here on the corner and the police stopped you? You cut yeah. off? Yeah. You remember this turn down here? I sure do, Ernie. And that's when they rode off the Geo Metro. I think I may be a bad driver. <laughs> yeah. Excuse me. So turn around? Yeah. Back on the navigation course, Madalena and Jen are lost again. So, Madalena decides to pull a U-turn in the middle of the road. Oh, you're joking. You're so joking. Oh, my God. But she misses the middle of the road. For Madalena, this is normal. She is careless to the point of being reckless. I can't even count the number of accidents that I've had. I think she has ADHD. What? Driving too fast. Too close. Uh, too close and too fast. Madalena still lives with her parents, and they still pay for her car insurance. The bill? Nine grand a year. I don't think I'm Canada's worst driver. Absolutely not. Mad! 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 Okay, like. Oh, my God. What is wrong with you? This is where we have to go. Oh, my God. We're going to die. I'm scared. Scared for my life. She's talking so bad about me, but she should be on the show too. Like she can't drive either. I don't know what she's talking about. She's here, we're here. Is that smoke coming from my car? Before I get in the car with Madalena, my mom's gonna say I'm a good driver because mommies always have to have faith in their daughters. I normally pray. What are you doing? She has problems concentrating on the road and understanding that she's not the only driver on the road. Hello? 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 I get the finger like at least once a day. <laughs> to get around, Madalena often depends on the kindness of strangers. Especially strong strangers. I don't want it to fall at you. Oh my god, thank you! You're the nicest man ever! I'm a little bit concerned uh, by uh, 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 Jennifer Lopez and, and Jennifer Aniston there. Hopefully they did make it. Manuel and his co-pilot, Alex, are right on the speed limit, holding a steady course. Which is more than I can say for Chris and his stressed out wife, Michelle. How fast are these trips to be going? Well, I'm trying to keep it around 80. Okay, but that's not 80. I can't feel the accelerator. Like, these hiking boots are not great. 13 years ago, Chris learned to drive and he got his license.
Then he stopped driving completely. Oh, For him, Chris. being behind the wheel feels like trespassing. I just don't know where my foot is on the pedal. I can't feel it. I'm wearing boots. I would feel safer in the car with Chris if he was in the back seat. <laughs> Do what? You slamming on the brakes. It hurts my neck. We got married in 2001, and Two. we've been living here since. 2002. Oh, pardon me, 2002. Michelle is most of the time very understanding. You good boy, stay. Will kid me around a lot and joke about it, which helps to deal with it. Right? Oh, I didn't mean to do that. All right. I might be Canada's worst driver because if I get out on the road, I have the full capacity to possibly kill someone. <laughs> Stop laughing. First to reach the checkpoint is David. He's doing just fine, although he does leave every decision up to his buddy George. Alpaca exing, whatever that is. There's the animals down there on the side. It's a barn. This is it. All right. Let's get out of here before somebody sees us. Okay. George bugs me uh, when I'm driving a lot because uh, he's too jumpy sometimes. He jump he likes to jump around the car. I can't show my seatbelt works. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even thinks he's hit. He's just driving with him. It's uh, you just never feel comfortable. David has a nasty habit of causing long scrapes on parked cars. He's caused a few solid bumps and bangs, too. And the worst part is, he thinks he's the unlucky one. According to Chinese mythology, um, I'm 24 years old, and when you're 24, 25 years of age, uh, it's supposed to be a very unlucky year for you, especially when you're driving, especially when you're driving. Hey, man. But bad luck isn't his problem. It's bad reaction time, bad peripheral vision, bad planning. The list goes on and on. I think David can definitely improve as a driver. It's only up from here. Slow down, Faith. The first building on your right, approximately 200. Okay, I, I see right Oh, it's a llama, there. isn't it? <laughs> it looks like a llama. That's a llama, ain't it? Rob, are they not llamas? Yeah, I think so, I think so. They're yeah. a pack of dirt or something. Uh, no, they're alpacas, that's what it is. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. it's on. Manuel is next to find the alpaca farm, and he's instantly smitten with the furry beasts. <sighs> Manuel is a computer genius. He can speak six languages, but behind the wheel, he's a basic dunce. I think that some people lose their patience with me. I feel utterly unsafe. I feel that he's paying way too much attention on the operating of his vehicle and not enough attention on the observation of what he's doing. Manuel's main problem is that he gets caught up in the details and misses the big picture. Any sign that I see, if I see it, I'll try to obey it. There you go. It's illegal. Is it? <laughs> Oh, yeah, maybe I, did. I think um, through uh, Canada's worst drivers, I will get to uh, share with other people uh, no. that you know it's all right to to understand that you have some weaknesses around your driving and that you can improve them. So if I'm able to uh, share that and if I can show those improvements, I definitely will be that'll be a big win for me. Don't laugh because it upsets me. Okay. Oh, there's somebody ahead of us. Back on the highway, Faith Ann is now stuck behind Heather. The speed limit's 80 and I just topped out at 60. <laughs> like a crack addict taking one last hit before going to jail, Faith Ann passes on the double yellow line. Oh, guess who's coming up? Faith Ann is in an awful hurry to get to the rehab center. That was illegal. Yeah, no, I know you can't cross the double yellow, I understand that. Now Bob's behind Faith Ann, and he doesn't like that one bit. Will she do 110 miles an hour? That's the question. <laughs> if you can't drive in two lanes coming up a hill. She's going to pass on that curb and hill. Oh, right. She's out of control. <laughs> so you can see those other people passing us because they don't want to go at the speed limit. I like that. A bride is as crazy as I am. There comes Rob. Rob the knob. Stuck behind Grandpa. We're doing 80 clicks. 
I know that you probably guys would be going faster, but I'm proud of going at the speed limit. That makes me feel good to not go over the speed limit. Speed limit is just a suggestion on how fast to go on the road. <laughs> Same as the stop signs, the slow and go. I thought it was a law. But... Yeah, a law for wrong, you, though. not for me. Okay, promise me no games. Can't promise that. Faith Ann blocks Bob by speeding down the middle of the road. To get around her, Bob recklessly rides the soft shoulder, accelerating to 150 kilometers an hour. Oh, we're in the mud. Gotta hang up. This behavior is beyond illegal. It's potentially fatal. Hey, we took her. <laughs> Sweet! It's your fault. Bob's gonna beat us now. Hope you're happy. She's as psycho as me, man. I like that, Rod. When they finally get here... It's not a race, Bob! Rehabilitation begins. Shut up! It's true! Canada's worst drivers are trying to change their lives. To do it, they're headed to the Driver Rehabilitation Center, located on this converted military base. The base, where's the base? Do you know? Alex, are we going on the same? I have no clue. I am totally lost now. What town is this? It stops at where it ends. <sighs> Bob, 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 Bob! Rob, shut up! We are looking for um, the old base. Army bases are on top of things. Because they're like up and they look down and they people and they come up down. So if it's an old army base, it's up, right? Most of our drivers are honing in on the rehab center. Heather, however, is having some difficulties. So I went all this way, I'm driving to Picton, just so I can get to a driving rehab center. What do you need it, man? David Chow was the first driver on the road in our staggered start. Now, he's the first to arrive at the destination. Congratulations. Thank you. You made it. <laughs> all right, I'm going to yeah. put your keys in the lockbox. Okay. You won't get them here until you graduate from our program, all right? All right. After David is, well, I wonder who this could be. Oh my God, I can hear a car coming. Yeah, 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 you're cool. I was in high school once too. Come on now. He was the last driver to start, but he's the second driver to arrive. To make it here before the rest of the class, Bob proudly displayed complete and utter contempt for the rules of the road. I'm not getting in a car with this man, I'll tell you that. Are you under some delusion that this is a race? Yeah. It's I not a race, man. It's all a matter. In a rural road, man, are you going 90 miles an hour? You're talking about going 140, 150 kilometers. Yeah, it was a race. It was not a race! It was not a race! It's not a race, Bob! It's not a race! Watch this, Bob. I'm putting your me. keys in the box. You don't get them until you graduate. Next in is our Bulgarian-born driver. Tatiana. You made it! Welcome! <laughs> Give me your keys. I'm going to put it in the lockbox here. After Tatiana is Manuel. It was very good. Anything stand out about the drive? I love the animals. I, I, this, they, they just came up and, you know, it's, it's, it's a, I, I had never touched alpacas, so they're, they're really beautiful. Faith Ann. Look, she means it. She drives hard and fast, eh? We heard you had a little run-in with our wingnut Bob. Yeah, he's, he's a piece of work, that guy. Now, he claims that you pushed him off into the soft shoulder of the road, almost causing a major accident going 90 miles an hour. That's because he doesn't know how to drive. Still lost out there, Madalena pulls in for more directions and hits a rock. I couldn't stop. What did you run into? The rock. Thing. Oh Without a scratch, Chris arrives at the rehab center. You know what? I actually thought he was going to come last. He's a safe guy. He's not one of these guys that's going to be going 140 passing in the ditch. Which is not to say that he won't be in the ditch, but... Welcome. Congratulations. Thank you very much. You made it. Drop your keys in there. We'll hand them back to you when you graduate. <laughs> Next, hurtling along at the speed of a rampaging glacier, is Heather. Two and a half hours on the road. It's okay though. It's not a race. What did you see on your way? 
oh, we saw some farms and we saw trees and birds and, you know. Pull in backwards behind your picture, yes. Wrong way, Madalena. Finally, our youngest driver proves to be the slowest. It took Madalena three hours to get here, and on the way, she scratched some paint and cracked her bumper. We got lost a lot, and um, I got stuck in a ditch, and then I hit a rock. So this little crack here that you created in the bumper today, that's not a concern to you whatsoever, eh? Um, that doesn't even constitute an accident. No, as long as my dad doesn't notice, like, a chunk of my car missing, that's fine. Hand me your keys. Can I get them back? You get them back when you graduate. Shut up. It's true. The Driver Rehabilitation Center. Forty years ago, this was a bustling airbase owned by the Canadian military. Now, its abandoned tarmacs and hangars and barracks are being used by us in an effort to educate Canada's worst drivers. <coughs> Whether they like it or not, our students will learn through intensive driver's ed and a series of cunning in-car challenges. Our mandate is to make Canadian roads safer. And to help us achieve that goal, we've enlisted the help of this crack team of experts. Dr. Uzma Raymond is a psychology professor at Queen's University. Jim Kenzie is a syndicated auto journalist. At Young Drivers of Canada, Scott Marshall instructs the instructors. And finally, we needed a speed demon of our own. So we got race car driver Kelly Williams. Congratulations and welcome. You all made it to the Drivers Rehabilitation Center in your own special way. Before we move on to our second challenge, I do just want to say how much I admire you, honestly. Nominators, you looked at a loved one, be it a spouse or your best friend or someone who you work with, and you said, you are one of the worst drivers in Canada. And that took guts. And drivers, you want to talk about gutsy, you listened. You accepted that accusation and you came here and that's especially courageous and I just want to applaud you for doing that. Thank you and please know you will leave here being a better driver. Even the ones of you who don't think you need it. I'll give you the stink eye, Bob. So, let's move on to our second challenge. As our participants have shown, driving, that's easy. Stopping before you hit something, that's a totally different story, particularly in a blizzard. For our next challenge, we're going to ask Canada's worst drivers to come to a screeching halt. This wall of cardboard boxes is going to be driven at at a speed of 60 kilometers an hour. Do you think they'll stop before they hit it? Okay, I'm good to go. As always, Here I'll be doing the driving challenge first to prove it can be done. Beside me today is our driving teacher, Scott Marshall. Scott's figured out the distance it takes to stop in these conditions. And when we're that far away from the wall, he'll turn on the red light that's mounted to the dash. That will be the driver's cue to lock up the brakes. On 60. Yo! He flashed on the red light and, oh, come on, Ice. Scott, you know your business, baby. Uh, I'm sold. I'm done. When it comes to Canada's worst drivers, <laughs> The lights are on, but no one's home. Canada's worst drivers are about to demonstrate their braking skills. To prepare them for this icy test, we gave each nominee an hour-long driving lesson with instructor Heather Jones. But this challenge is about more than just stopping. It's about trust. It's about reaction time. And it's about to begin. As always, our judges will be scrutinizing the driver's every move. Did I mention there's a surprise coming? First up, Tatjana. We're going to go up to 60 kilometers an hour. I'm going to watch her speed. Mm -hmm. So how do you think she's going to do? I don't know. That's not her strong point. And when you see this light, you're going to stop. I'd like to see what her face looks like when she's doing this. Ah! <laughs> oh, look, here she comes. Now she should lock up right there. She locked up early. Oh, yes, Tatiana. I never, never hit the wall. <laughs> I was so scared that I was going to hit the wall. My heart is pumping. What scared you the most? Did you trust the guy beside you to turn the light on? No. No? <laughs> <laughs> I 
I trust nobody but God, you know. <laughs> so we're going to do it again. Okay. It's time for the surprise. Tatiana now knows how long it takes for this car to stop, so we're leaving it entirely up to her. The drill is drive until the light turns on, then hit the brakes. This time, the light's not going to come on. <laughs> the idea being, Does he do not? you really need to have a light come on to tell you not to run into a wall? <laughs> Will he tell her that? No, of course not. Of course not. He's going to tell her that the light's going to come on. Here comes turn two. No light coming up. Bam! Oh, Holy shit! She wasn't even close. Oh, oh, oh. never beat the lamp! But, there, but there's a wall in front of you. Do you really need somebody to put a light on to tell you not to drive through a wall? <laughs> Just moments after you told me you trust no one. You trust no yeah, one. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was waiting and waiting and waiting. It never came. <laughs> it was a trick, wasn't it? It was a trick, yeah. You understand the point of this exercise? Yes. <laughs> What's the point of this exercise? Well, trust yourself, watch everything around and all the, the the distance measure blah 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 i don't know everything just be aware of everything absolutely around you. congratulations you might have <laughs> hit the wall but you understand the point of this exercise are you still in the piece piece of cake <laughs> yeah he's smiling she must have done all right all right scott hasn't thrown up yet tatiana failed but she learned her lesson next up is chris just driving this huge mercury in a straight line is a challenge for him there he goes oh lock it up buddy lock it up Yes! You stop, man. Okay, so what? Is there a control issue that you have with somebody else telling you when to stop? Yeah, I definitely don't like that. You're the one in control, so... Technically, yeah, because I'm the one driving. Next up is Heather. On her first run, she passed with flying colors. Now, how's she going to make out this time? The light's not going to come on, see? Here she goes. Oh, she knows enough to stop. Good for you. <laughs> the light didn't come on, did it? Yes, it did, no, didn't it? Didn't. It didn't. But you were smart enough to stop anyways. Right. That's the point <laughs> of this. Will Chris show the same degree of common sense? Wow. Oh, <laughs> there's something oh. to be said for his cautiousness. Do you really need a red light to tell you not to run into a wall? No, you don't. True. You don't. Some of our contestants do. <laughs> like Madalena, for example. She's not just waiting for that red light. She's completely depending on it. I'm pretty close to the scene. Are you going to press it? <laughs> she will stop. Way to go, Madalena. So, you stopped. I didn't hit it. Did you think you were going to stop? Um, no, I, was, I wanted him to push the button because I didn't want to crash it. What did you think was going to happen when you were flying down and the light wasn't coming on, the light um, wasn't coming on? That I was going to drive through the boxes. Well, you didn't. No. It all worked out. Becoming a better driver. Look at that. Look at that. Let's do it again. Oh, what's that noise? Spinning up the tires. In terms of fashion, she had the coolest stop of them go. all. She did angled in nice, had the little side thing. And that's the most important thing. That is right? the most important thing. Right. If you're gonna crash, how good do you look? Exactly. <laughs> at six oh sixty-five. So the question is, what do you think? she's gonna do do you think she will wait for the light trusting it completely or will she drive right on through we're about to find out did you push it but why would you want to hit a wall okay where was the light bulb moment when you should maybe get on the brakes yeah, yeah. I mean, she's pointing to the light again going, come on she didn't even decrease her speed are you okay what? you've been freaked out no Just look back. What are you, 40 meters, 50 meters from the wall? Yeah, I guess. I mean, it wasn't even close. You didn't even start breaking until you were well beyond the wall. Because the red light didn't come on. So basically, you have blind faith in the passenger that he was going to tell you to do exactly what you needed to do when you needed to do it. Yeah, he's the driving dude. He knows stuff. When your foot's on the gas and the brake and the wheel's in front of you, you're the driving dude, dude. I know. I got it. I learned my lesson. Okay. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. I'll add it to my book of lessons. You have learned. more lessons to learn, though, I'm afraid. I'm sure I do. I'm sure you do, too. Soon, one of Canada's worst drivers makes a serious breakthrough. Canada's worst drivers are in the midst of a braking challenge. The idea is to go 60 kilometers an hour driving at a wall of boxes and then stop when a red light comes on. Up next is our always exasperated road rager, Bob. Is it possible to get through to Bob or what? I don't think it, you guys will even get through to him. Not a chance, No, eh? I don't think so. Okay, 60. Good car. 
You think he's going to go right through? Yeah. You think he's going to touch the brakes at all? Yeah. But I think he's going to be going a lot fast, and he's probably going to brake a lot later than he's supposed to, too. Don't hit the light yet. He's waiting for the light. He's looking at that light. He's oh. looking at the look. Oh, no! There you go. A little slow, eh? A little slow. Oh, God. I wouldn't drive with him. What just happened to you? He waited too long to hit the light. I saw the light come on for <laughs> yeah. a full second before you locked up the brakes. I, I was looked looking at him for before it. though. You looked at what before? Him Me. before. <laughs> well, you glanced over to him instead of looking at the wall. Yeah. So you're telling me that everything would have gone fine if you'd been looking forward through the windshield? Yeah. But you turned and looked at your passenger and ran into <laughs> yeah. the wall. Yeah. Some people well, learn from their mistakes. Yeah. Bob doesn't seem like he's one of those people. Neither does our next driver. Accident prone, Faith Ann. When that red light comes on, she'd better stop right away. There's the light, and she. Ooh -hoo. <laughs> hey, hey! And so, is this just a trip down the road for you, or did we learn something here? Trip down the road. Okay, Faith Ann. Please stay right there. Don't kill us. Uh, 60. This time, the driving instructor is not going to turn the red light on. It's a trust game. Now we're breaking the trust. Will she be smart enough to stop? No problem. Oh, oh there she goes for the brake. Left foot brake, and right through it. Oh, you know, she didn't even put like any pedal pressure. It no. was like, oh, I think maybe no. I'll touch the brake pedal. Like, yeah. If it's an emergency, you need to get into that. She brake looks pedal really hard. concerned too. You understand what happened? Yeah, I was gonna smash the wall on purpose until I decided to brake, basically. No, no, no! You're not supposed to smash the wall. Well, on I purpose. know. Well, I was still waiting for the light, but obviously you wanted me to do it on my own, and I didn't do it. We wanted you to brake on, on your my, own, yes, exactly. exactly. Not smash the wall. Right? Exactly. The lesson is, you should be trusting your own instincts more than the other people in the car with you? Probably. Will you hit another wall in your life? Hopefully not, but I can't guarantee it. You can't guarantee that, hey? Can't guarantee anything. Faith Ann destroyed the wall, but refuses to take responsibility. Manuel's first attempt was a success, but how will he do now without the light? Does Manuel think outside the box or inside the box? We'll find out now. Oh, inside the box, Manuel! Oh, Manuel, man! I'm sorry. I, I wasn't... You don't have to be sorry. There's nothing to apologize for. As the operator of a vehicle, it's your responsibility at every second you're on the road. You really need someone to turn on a red light to tell you to stop before a wall of boxes. No, they don't have to. I just... I, you think everybody else is going to do what they say they're going to do? This is the idea of this, is that if somebody else sails through a red light just because you have a green light, it's still your responsibility to miss them, even though they're the ones screwing up. Okay. You understand my point? Yeah, I do. I really, I really messed it up. <laughs> and I just destroy your wall, so I... I... It's okay, it's built to destroy. <laughs> it's built to destroy. Manuel feels bad for destroying the wall. Last up, David. David's not known for having quick reflexes. This could get ugly. It seems like he's in another world when he's driving. Is that right? I don't even think he'll see the red light, to be honest. He might even run, run right through that thing. I feel bad for the instructor in there. It's dead. Good job. Perfect. Yes. It all worked out well. Yes, it did. Are you surprised <laughs> at yourself? Yeah, I am. I, I, from what I heard, everyone's failing this, so... No, um, I guess I'm the first one to pass. I don't know what, what, the, what qualifies as a pass, but... But do you often rely on the person who's in the passenger seat to be your eyes and ears? No, of course not. No. I, I try not to, at least. No, look out the back window. Yeah. Nope, we're just going to back up. I'm terrified every time I get into the car with David. Actually I terrified? I am terrified. Really? I, if there's any other choice, I would take it. 16. What's going to happen? He's going to sail right through the wall. He might even turn around and hit the wall from the side. Does he know that the light's not going to No, he doesn't know. Oh. Whoa. I didn't hear the, I didn't see the red light. No. Yeah, but look at the look on his face. It's like, oh, I don't know what just happened. Okay, even Scott looked a little nervous yeah. there. Oh, Scott had the wheel turned before he hit the wall. Do you notice that? He had yeah. to get out of You all right? Yeah. You scared me. Yeah. Did you scare yourself? I did. I didn't see the red light coming on at all. The red right. light didn't come on. Did you see the, the wall coming up? Yeah. Well, don't hit the wall, man. I, I, thought, I, I, I thought we were doing it over again, so no, no, I was waiting for the red light. I thought it was part of a challenge or something. To... It is yeah. part of a challenge. Yeah. 
And the challenge is, will you run into the wall or will you listen to somebody who is maybe falling asleep beside you? Okay. <laughs> you get the point? Yes, I do. It's a good thing David went last because he killed the car. One of the reasons why we picked this car mm -hmm. is that it's because it's large and indestructible. Yes. You destructed it. <laughs> <laughs> if such a word exists. Wow. Canada's worst drivers are not impressing our experts. What's going through your mind when you do something like that? A simple discussion turns into a grilling. The challenges are over, and Canada's worst drivers are about to have their performances evaluated by our team of experts. This is not fun. Jim Kenzie is terrified by Madalena's potential for disaster. Scratched metal can be repaired. Absolutely. An eight kilometer an hour collision can kill somebody. Scott believes that Manuel overthinks every act of driving. You are a very analytical person. Weed out the things that don't involve your actual task of driving and focus only on the things that, that you need to. Tatiana's paranoia and stiffness are addressed by race car driver Kelly. Everything you need to do needs to be a really evasive maneuver. It needs to be like this, or it needs to be this. You need to look further down the road, and that's why you get stressed when you're, when you're driving. And David has major control issues. Uzma brings the hammer down. You were in the driver's seat, but you gave all responsibility to Scott at that point. All the experts fear that Chris's wife, Michelle, is making a bad driver worse. I hate to say this, but I don't think your wife's helping you because she's laughing at you, telling you that you're an idiot. And I don't think that's that's the stuff that you, you should have in the car because it's all it does is it beats you down and makes you less secure about what you're doing. Heather could drive through a parade and not even notice. You need to really be aware of what's going on around you other than just inside your box. Bob has a serious smoking problem. It's especially bad when he smokes his tires on the highway playing bumper tag. You have kids, and kids are getting too close to the sidewalk, and cars are going by, we pull them back. Right. Because we're thinking, what if? Yeah, yeah. Do you think as a driver, what if? Oh, oh my. And finally, Faith Ann. If 37 accidents and a steel plate in her leg hasn't made Faith Ann care, what will? Judging from what we've heard and seen, I think you are close to being sociopathic the way you drive. That. What's going through your mind when you do something like that? So eight unbelievably talentless drivers. Thus far, I've showered them with encouragement, but now it's time for some tough love. They need to hear the ugly truth. We have reached the end of the first episode of Canada's Worst Driver, and I must say, I am completely horrified by the way these people drive. It truly is beyond comprehension. Luckily though, this is just the first week of rehabilitation, which means that all of these people will stick around for some more desperately needed driver's ed. The first of them won't graduate until sometime in the next episode. Manuel, you are probably the smartest person in this room, which is good because you have an awful lot to learn. Madalena, speaking of awful, you have to learn not to hit other people's cars, ever. Even the smallest scratch is a big problem. And Bob, oh, Bob, you have some real driving skills, man. But something has gone seriously wrong with the wiring underneath your hood. Will any of these people graduate? Well, if they don't improve, we might have to hold back the whole class. Nothing is certain at the Driver's Rehabilitation Center, except for one thing. Somebody here is Canada's worst driver. On the next episode of Canada's Worst Driver, pandemonium ensues.
Now, 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 now